Hello folks, I'm L.A. and this is a short video about trends and trend transitions. And you can see trends and trend transitions here on resources, current trends, market trends. And if you pop in there, this one actually has general markets and the market sectors, the major market sectors. And it has the trend for the short, intermediate, and long-term time frames for all of these instruments. A trend transition is when you break out or you trade beyond some prior swing point high or swing point low. And so in this case, let's look at both cases. In this case, if we look at a break of a low, here's a swing point low here, right? And then you get the break on this bar and you see the arrow on the TA Today charts. You see the arrow showing you that there is a break and a transition. It transitioned to sideways. And that means it had to have been bullish prior to that, although the bullishness in this case is somewhere over here off the charts. So you had a trend that was going this way. You break a swing point low. Now you're going that way, sideways. And if you were to go farther down and break another swing point low, for example, in this case, if it had have gotten lower than this, right, that would have broken this swing point low, and that would have transitioned you to bearish. From, from bullish to sideways to bearish, from bearish to sideways to bullish. That's the only way you can move between twin, trends. And so in this particular case, you did that. As you come back up, now you have a lot of swing point highs up here at these areas. And now you see a trend transition here to bullish. And what did that do? That broke a swing point high. In this case, it broke this one. It also broke this one and this one as well. So you broke three swing point highs in one swoop on this move. And then on the very next bar, you actually broke one more, right? So you broke four of them, and that arrow is there, on the way up. Those are trend transitions. You transitioned from sideways to bullish. In this case, you transitioned from bullish to sideways. This actually is called an affirmation, a trend, a transition, a, a trend affirmation. So you you reaffirm that you actually have a bullish trend, and you affirm it in this case with a confirmed bullish trend. Green is confirmed, red is suspect. The only difference between confirmed and suspect is how much volume was present on the breakout. If you have more volume, it's it's confirmed. If you have less volume, it's suspect. What does it mean to be suspect versus confirmed? It means your probability of continuance is a little bit greater when it's confirmed than when it's suspect. And the, those probabilities differ depending on the type of trend and depending on the time frame. So that's a quick wrap of trend and how they transition. So now the question is, is what does it mean to transition from bullish to bearish? And how does that play into this ideal of, of uh, you know, the, the all three time frames at the same time? So, if, for example, if we're looking at the financials, they're sideways, bearish on the intermediate, bullish on the long-term time frame. So let's look at the financials as an example. So here's the XLF. Here's the transition to sideways. Why did it transition? Well, it broke this swing point and transition from bullish right to sideways this was the bullish now it's sideways now if you're looking at this on a classical ta you would say oh it's just still bullish right you got you know because classical ta says you have a series of higher highs and higher lows and that's kind of what you have here right higher highs higher lows all the way up now you have, in this case, a lower low. You're on this time frame. You get a lower low. In this particular case, you know, do we now, if we were doing classical to TA, do we just look at this low and this low, or do we actually look at that low and call it a low? Classical probably would only look at this one. It wouldn't look at these up here. It wouldn't say it went to sideways. Neoclassical has an algorithmic formula that it follows, and says, oh, no, that one actually did change the sideways. What does it mean, though? It becomes the question. Well, the fact that it's suspect 
gives you some confidence that it's probably not going to last that long. Sideways trends don't last a long time. They typically tell you something fairly quickly. So in this case, you look at it and you say, okay, on the short-term time frame, there's some hesitation. There's some pullback. What does the intermediate term time frame look like, though? And if we go to the intermediate one, let me grab the weekly. On the weekly one, we look at it and say, oh, well, there's really no change in trend here. It's still bearish. So what that means to me is that, oh, you've got to be a little bit more careful now because in this particular time frame, and if we go back and get the date on that first one, this was transitioning on November 3rd. So let's go back over here. November 3rd would have been right on this week as we come back down. But that doesn't mean a lot if you look at the long-term time frame. So if we pull the monthly chart up, the monthly chart is still bullish and it hasn't broken a swing point low. The thing you have to realize when you're looking at trends and trend transitions across the three time frames, the short term time frame is going to change a lot. The intermediate is not going to change as much or not as frequently, but it is still going to change somewhat, right? Three, four times a year sometimes. The long term time frame, that thing can go three or four years before it changes. So the long-term time frame is always the one you have to be concerned with if a transition takes place. The others may or may not mean something. So in the case of the XLF, there was a test, but not a failure. There was another test and a test, but it held. So on this time frame, the long-term time frame, it is still bullish. As long as the long-term time frame remains bullish, then you should remain generally bullish towards the market. One other thing that you should realize is that on this scale, these, because they don't change very often, when they do start to change, you have to be concerned about them. And although this is anecdotal, typically when you see two to three of these change, in this case technology is sideways, it was bearish, discretionary sideways it also was bearish and in just the past week before I did this show the industrials were bearish now they're sideways when you see multiple changes here two to three of them that typically means that you're going to see most of these try to go in the same direction in this case they're going from bearish to sideways and so you're going to see most of these try to transition now from this to this. And that could mean that they eventually go to bullish because if you look over at the long-term time frame, it's bullish across the board with the one exception of energy. Everything else is bullish. Well, I take that back. The base metals actually are bearish too. So you have still a long-term time frame that is bullish in all cases except for two. And if we were to get one more to transition here, that would be a red flag that we may have something longer term that is about to change. But until you get about three of these, right, it doesn't mean much. And that's true here, and that's also true especially on the short-term time frame. So when I'm looking at trend, I'm looking to see, do I get transitions on a few of these to signal that the rest of them are probably going to follow? And if I do, like in this case, these two and this one now, more than likely, these are all going to try to go to a sideways, potentially bullish scenario. The fact that we have a couple of them over here that are still showing uh, bearish simply says that we have to recognize that the probabilities or there that we could get one more and if we get one more then I have to be even more concerned right if that were to happen I have to be more concerned about this time frame actually starting to see transitions in the long-term time frame um, sectors and potentially in the markets now what typically happens on the way down is that when the sectors themselves enough of these start to change these go immediately with it. On the way up, there's a little bit of a lag. In other words, these start to go bullish, and then these eventually go bullish. And so you see a little bit of a lag on the long term on the way up, not so much on the way down, because down is usually fairly fast, and the breaks happen across the board. 
same thing on the intermediate term. You see a little bit of a lag between here and there most of the time, but not always. And so that is sort of how these things transition. If we're looking just at trend and nothing else, that's one way to look at these. And that's kind of my ideal about what I'm looking at when I'm looking at trend transitions themselves. Um, this is part one. I'll have a part two to this uh, at some point in the future. And that's a good introduction.